Welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to a Vintage League Tuesday night live stream. Don't think I'm going to be able to make a Wednesday night stream this week, so I wanted to make sure we got one in before the RCQ on Friday. Uh, I was perusing the Twitter, as I am wont to do, and I saw some fun food chain brews from Mo Panda, uh, legacy streamer expert player. And I thought that the blue green one with, um, I mean, at the time it had their version had you know four endurances, four subtleties in it, uh, was an interesting idea to try in vintage. I know I fooled around with food chain once in the past, but I don't think it ever made its way onto a recording. So um, you get some really solid upgrades in this kind of mid rangey blue green shell with Deathrite Shaman and Oko in comparison to uh, Legacy, but you also get to have. Um, Really solid use of Force of Will and Force of Vigor between all of the uh, the green-blue castables. Uh, you do lose out, obviously, on four Brainstorm, four Ponder, which are, you know, staple legacy um, uh, items. But we are going to play the kind of like, a, it's basically like a bug combo shell with the, still with the five uh, strip mine effects uh, to go along with our Death Rite Shaman and three drops plus free drops game plan. Um really excited to maybe combo off and, and cast an ooze today i have not played much uh ooze storm decks but i know that there's a bunch of uh fringe playable ones happening in a variety of formats uh modern legacy and there's a card i'm kind of interested in casting just seems like a good time uh and of course you know every time you ever exile a mist hollow griffin to a force of will uh an angel gets their wings for sure um, anything else in this deck? I wanted to fit more subtleties for the current metagame, but, um, I just couldn't figure out how to do so. So we have a couple of subtleties in the board to go with, uh, you know, a pretty expansive anti-graveyard, five anti-graveyard, four collector roof, because I think just in collector roof is typically one of the most busted against those artifact decks. Finish up the four vigors and the four endurances, uh, grab a couple fluster storms for the combo decks and uh, that's you know that's basically a, a full vintage deck in, in a nutshell so I'm hoping it'll be interesting and powerful I think it should be fine uh, any deck playing ancestral and force of will is usually good enough to to get some wins it's just how will you interact with the uh, variety of things you experience in a vintage league like you know bizarre of Baghdad uh, but I think we have a pretty decent bizarre of Baghdad setup so uh, I, I am I'm hopeful this will go well. <laughs> I'll see you in round one. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. All right, here we are now, round one of our league with Food Chain. And I guess I didn't explain in the intro what we were doing, which I, I guess is kind of silly. Uh, we're playing Food Chain. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, a, a, an enchantment that it uh, goes in a creature-based combo deck where you can add X mana by exiling a creature you control, uh, and where X is 1 plus the uh, mana cost of the creature. And so if you are to exile a Mist Hollow Griffin, you would get 5 mana, and then you could cast the Mist Hollow Griffin from exile, making infinite mana of any and all colors, in which case you can draw your deck with Hydrocrasis or make infinite Ballista or make infinite Storm Oozes. Um, Uro probably helps draw at least for a little bit, uh, and, and that's the combo. It's just kind of going to be a somewhere between a mid range and a combo deck, kind of like a bug with a combo kill. See how it works here in round one. Uh, my opponent has also got a spicy brew for us. They have said so in chat. Uh, I will trust that they are not lying to me. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna battle with this. I'm gonna mulligan. Ooh. Ooze is worse than a Ballista, but it's also better on, like, an average, like, a, a, on an average play than a Ballista, so. You should be able to use Food Chain Mana to escape Uro, but you still need to exile cards, because escape is an alternate casting cost. I, I, if, if I understand it correctly. Uh, this hand doesn't have enough mana, I'm going to mulligan it. So now we're down to five. This one is the best we've had so far. Uh, let's get rid of the, the ooze, your daddy, and I think I'm going to get rid of the endurance. 
see what our opponent has for us. They have promised it is spicy, so we will see what it is. I would never, ever want to keep this hand, ever, but, you know, you're on a mold of five. You don't have a lot of choices. Ancient Tomb is probably good for us. Let's see what they have. A Grim Monolith. That's probably bad for us. We kind of need a, a Force of Will, maybe. Let's take a probe and see what they have for us. From my understanding, Food Chain has always been a somewhat, you know, fringe legacy playable deck. So it's a coveted jewel deck, but it's also a Sphere of Resistance deck. Now that is quite odd. So, hmm. if I were to wasteland them, then they are pretty behind on mana. However, I could instead death right, which means they would have a very hard time casting coveted jewel as I'd be able to steal the jewel. So I, I think in that sense, it makes more split, more sense to just get the death right in play. We also have possibly the ability to go, um, you know, three mana if, if there's ever a fetch. We, ha we haven't had any fetch lands. If one of these was a fetch land, we could go Uro and get the Wasteland and then Wasteland them next turn. So their deck is in an interesting spot here where it, I don't know exactly what the game plan is. It doesn't seem to be be super spicy but the, there are no sphere of resistance jewel decks at the moment so i think playing out a creature makes them ha unlikely to play the jewel um and so that should put us in a in a more happy state happy state wasteland is gone and they're gonna play second grim so now my wasteland doesn't really do anything uh it does let them play like a sphere after a jewel I don't have any, um, ooh, I was going to say, uh, I don't have any, um, collector roofs in the main, but I do have force of vigor. So I could demonic for force of vigor and vigor their two monoliths. Is that a good play? It certainly seems like a good play. So, uh, I didn't actually think about it too much. I, maybe I was supposed to play the Bayou over the uh, Tropical Island. You, you you, could totally be right. I didn't really put a lot of thought into that. Uh, could have just been a mistake. This does lose me my, my engine here, but I think it's going to give me the best chance of stifling their game plan. And then we can hit follow up with a wasteland, and I think we're in uh, a pretty cool spot. Let's see what this does. That was a pretty good demonic tutor, I would agree. Opponent opponent is uh liking that. Ooh, okay. Saga gamer and sphere. All right, well we have the wasteland answer. This is definitely a good thing. Um, so no reason not to get that in play. And then I think what we'll do, I guess I will Wasteland first so that I don't have to use cards in my yard. Cards in my yard just do seem important for Uro. So you want to waste Tomb? I think that is entirely too greedy. Uh, I think that's just like a good way to lose a game where I'm ahead. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I get it. I, I mean, I, I understand. Okay, so... All of these cards are quite bad for us, right? Because we can't even cast this for one because this costs four and this costs four and this is three but doesn't get us anywhere. So I think what I'll do is I'll just shuffle here. That's even worse. <laughs> uh, hmm. 
We do have the Bayou because we played the Bayou over the Trop, which gives us access to Death Ray Shaman activations, which could be worth it. So maybe I was right the whole time, Alias. Oh, wow. That's a, a Yavamaya. Okay. So things are definitely happening. Uh, will they play the second sphere? That's the question. I'll be very happy to have not kept my cards if they do. They did play the second sphere. All right. That puts them at 12. That is six activations of Death Ray Shaman. I currently only have four instants in my yard instances of sorceries uh that is an uncastable magic card we are in trouble i think uh it depends on how they draw out of this i also don't exactly know what's going on from our opponent um coveted jewel grim monoliths spheres and yavamaya i don't exactly know what that means uh, but I do know that we have Deathrite Shaman in play, and this Deathrite Shaman is very much banned in Legacy for a reason. Card is quite strong. Feshland is like our best possible hit for sure. Yeah, I mean, I have a clock, and uh, and neither player is casting things. I don't know. These spheres are very interesting. Um, they don't seem to be hitting land drops. They're at eight. Caracis. So this Caracis will cost five to be a one one, right? And then I would gain, I wouldn't get anything from it, right? I need to cast it for two. So I, I just am never casting this. So I mean, I would love to draw a Force of Will, to be honest, uh, or a Wasteland. A Wasteland or a Force of Will. Are, those are the cards I'm really looking to draw here. Um, Force will just let me make sure nothing bad happens. Wasteland will keep them off of spells. We have a lot of bad draws right now. So I kind of wasn't expecting. Force is a great draw, though. So that's not a bad one. We are about to run out of ammunition unless they cast a spell. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I I think we're missing a core component of whatever opponent is trying to do. There clearly is something else going on that we don't know about. Yeah, it could just not be a, a, a total dual deck. That's totally true. All right, they're at four, which is four Death Ray Shaman attacks. Another Caracis. All right, well, uh, Death Ray Shaman is coming in. We're in a good spot. I think like the best draw they have in their deck is probably Urza Saga, but that might be too late. They have up to seven cards in hand. <laughs> Oko is not castable. Nothing is castable. There's two spheres in play. The good news now is if they ever cast anything, we can force it and then kill them with uh, our Deathrite Shaman. So even if they were to cast like a Black Lotus to get mana, they also turned off their Ancient Tomb, right? Wait a second. Oh no, they used it for... Fo okay, so this is actually funny. We get to force this jet and then kill them on the next turn. Well, I probably shouldn't have shown them Mist Hollow Griffin. I, 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 I was distracted by the value. <laughs> I probably should not have done that. Um... That's a small oopsies. I, sh I should have pitched uh, the, the Oko. Maybe they won't notice. They might not have noticed. All right. Well, we've seen enough that we we're going to bring in our Vigors and our Collector Roofs for sure. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have the discipline to not pitch the Mist Hollow Griffin to the Force of Will. That was just not happening. Okay. So. I think I'm going to just take out the Ballista if we're going to bring in four oofs. That's a nice reason to play uh, Ave instead of Ballista. Um, I'd like to take out Mental Misstep, probably. Uh, Probe. We're going to be a little low on blue cards, bringing in six green cards. I'm a little worried about that. I'm a little worried about that. I think we can get rid of Endurance, but I'm not confident we can get rid of Endurance. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we just take out all of the combo elements here. No, maybe... Oh, I can't ever... I'll take out one crisis. That seems fine. We'll do this. That seems reasonable. 
Welcome, welcome. Uh, hmm. It was a weird game. <laughs> YouTube shouting can't save you from the bad plays. To be fair, Twitch chat shouting also doesn't typically save most people from the bad plays. All right. Okay. I'm definitely keeping this one. Uh, four lands against sphere shops with a uh, force and an ancestral. We don't have a basic island in our deck. We have a basic forest, if I recall correctly, from deck building. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, it's a fast bond deck. I kind of want to let this resolve, chat. I don't know if that's going to come back and bite me, but a lot of times fast bond ends up being a um, not the best. We'll, th we'll have to see. Oh, it's Golos. Okay, I will force Golos. That would that could end up being pretty bad for me. And oh, and Dark Depths. Okay, so it's it's kind of like a Zeus Bond deck. I don't know how Coveted Jewel fits into this. Drawing uh, an additional <laughs> Verdant Catacombs was not ideal. Several month trip to China. I'm glad you were able to get home. Congrats. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, those cards cost a million mana. Uh, this, I mean, I, uh, I would say we're in a good spot if I didn't have nothing in my hand. Like, if opponent just has a Thespian stage or, uh, uh, what? <laughs> okay. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm all, I don't know what's happening. I drew another Verdant Catacombs. Okay. Uh, all right. I mean, I'm I'm happy my opponent has a, an automaton instead of anything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the game we have ten ten mana is the one without the wastelands and sphere. I mean, we we still don't want our opponent to wasteland or sphere us. Oh no. I think we're supposed to lead on Uro, but now we might not have that chance. There is a lot of things happening on the opponent's side of the table. I'm I'm into it. So they took what? What did they just take? Oh, they took Uro. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we just went infinite mana, but we don't have any creatures to cast with it. Ah. Uh... Okay, so if I were to Oko and plus, that gets me to six and it doesn't die. Probably worth doing. Or should we just go for the infinite mana and hope to draw next turn? Yeah, maybe we should just play this instead. So if we can draw Ave next turn, that's the key. Did I bottom Ave? But I already fetched. I already fetched this game. I guess technically I can block every turn as well. I don't know if we're going to do that, but we can like block, exile it in combat, replay it. Hmm. I don't know what opponent's last card will end up being here. Again, any Thespian stage is going to be really annoying for us. <laughs> okay, collect I mean, Collector Roof is a magic card. We also have like a kind of nice, like if we draw a Moxin, we can just Oko a Moxin. What do, we, what do they have happen? They're at nine life here. What did they draw? A Golos? Oh no, post combat Golos. Uh, uh oh. 
All right, so I assume that gets Thespian stage so they can go for a 2020. Yep. So, I mean, I cut so many payoffs, though. If we draw a Hydra Crisis, that's the one. I drew a Strip Mine instead. All right, so I can Strip Mine the Thespian stage and play an Oko. And, uh, I mean, the Oko doesn't do anything but buy me time, but it's probably worth it. Does, is killing a 2020 better? It's probably better. Oh, I did not make the blue mana. Man, that thought on Seer taking the, the card was really bad for us. I think I'm supposed to hit the stage over the depths. So the Oko gets to save me six life. And I do have a blocking griffin, but they just have too many creatures now, unfortunately. But if I draw Hydra Crisis, we do win, so. All right, so this is at me. These are both at Oko. Yeah. So I'm going to nine and then, okay. And I have a food token. I just don't know if I'll ever have mana to actually activate it. I drew the hydroid cream. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to need to figure out the best way to cast these cards easily. Is there no automatically use mana? No, there's an Ave, and we're going to draw our whole deck. And then we can time walk. We, we have lethal here. I have lethal. It's just going to take a little while. I don't know if you want me to ask them to not do this, but I feel like we should do it once anyways. Yeah, someone figure out how many times I should do this. How big should I make my thing here? Like, what's the one that gets me the most, most of the way? And is there a button? <laughs> so I explained the combo to my opponent uh, and I don't think they're going to sit through it so <laughs> all right we got one. So I'm going to I'm going to say it again for chat. So what we're going to do is make enough mana to draw the almost the entirety of our deck, probably 40 cards, so 80 mana or so. Uh this is going to draw us into a, a, an Ave the Storm uh ooze. 
So we're going to make uh, a super large amount of attackers, and then we're going to play Black Lotus and Time Walk. And kill our opponent. So, crazy. We got there. <laughs> oh, no worries. So, that's our, that's our way through, and that would have been a lot of clicking, but it is what it is. You have Tron in your deck? No, I, I I took Ballista out of my deck, so... <laughs> uh, it was just the... We had to do the time walk kill. Alright, we're here in round two now. Uh, up against Noodle Boy. I have a hand that has uh, a classic bug hand of Mox Mox. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep this one. That sounds like a, a good time, anyways. Okay, Opal Life. So maybe we get another Vigor again. Ugh. Wow. That's a hell of a draw. Is this going to be a Citadel? No, it's going to be a... Brutal. Coveted Jewel Shops is so strong. It's it's legitimately oh my god. It is it is just super strong. The deck is really, really powerful. What made me play Painter at Eternal Weekend? Well, I I had got loaned a painter deck at uh Four Seasons in, in Italy, which was a 500 player. It was more players than Eternal Weekend in the States. Um and I top aided, split top eight of that event with uh, Painter playing it for the first time. So I had I had a really good time. And I want to play it again. Uh, oh, man, how do we play this out? So we don't have a collector roof in our deck, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to play a death right and not die, but I don't think that's possible. So I kind of wanted to de demonic for. I I think I have to actually demonic for force of will instead of force of vigor because like if I go force of vigor, they can have um, po. They didn't have po right. They played they played vault, so it's actually unlikely that they have po. It's pretty unlikely they have another ghostly flicker. But even then, what am I? I'm hitting Jewel and Emerald. Maybe. Maybe I'm hitting Jewel and Vault. I guess I could just get Force of Wild anyways. Like, the number one thing I want to do is get a creature in play. But I, I just don't think I'm allowed to pass into, into Jewel here. It just doesn't seem like that's something I can do. Yeah, but if I give them uh, a, a, a construct, I'm not going to be able to beat this construct anyways. So... I'm just going to take Force of Will, and I'm going to Wasteland their Saga, and then hope that we can eventually steal this Jewel kind of all we have going for us here. Oh, you want a Vigor Saga and Jewel? But then, then I'm like, how am I winning? I mean, my opponent can have double PO here. So, if opponent resolves a covered jewel, you usually lose the game. They also have hard cast force. They also have pact of negation. All right. Well, I don't think I need to play this out. Uh, yeah. I mean, when your opponent resolves covered jewel, you typically lose. <laughs> uh, I'm going to bring in, uh, of course, our Collector Roofs and our Vigors. I don't really like Flusterstorm against them. Uh, it's something we can consider. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, where I take out, like, uh, Ballista, Mist, uh, 
Um, I don't know. I feel like we should take out like some amount of combo and slower cards. I really don't like Fluster against Jewel. Hmm. That's a hand. That's just <laughs> my classic emerald baby. So we're going to probe, check out what's up. Oh, yeah, we lost. We lost badly. My opponent resolved turn one, you know, three uh, box, box, black lotus covered in jewels. So there was not much we could have done besides have a force in our hand. Opponent has... Oh, they are going to be very dead to this collector roof here. And that's like the downside of playing uh, Jewel Shops is that you just don't have sufficient counterplay. What they can do is draw a uh, Mightstone Weakstone off of like Workshop Workshop. That's something they can definitely do. Never mind. Okay, I think they're, they're dead. <laughs> All right, right back at you, Jewel Shops player. I recorded an off-stream uh, Jewel Shops prelim the other day. And it was the worst piece of content I've ever made from a, a gameplay perspective. There were four rounds of Magic, and it actually lasted like 40 minutes of, of game time. It was like Mono White versus Jewel Shops, Doomsday versus Jewel Shops, Oops versus Jewel Shops, and Mono White versus Jewel Shops. There was just eight, nine games. I think this is a keep. This hand doesn't do anything, but we're not really in the spot where we care about our hands doing things. Um, I think I'm not going to Vigor. I think I'm just going to use... Hmm. You just want to draw... I'm, I don't think I need to do anything now. I can just do things in their next upkeep. Interesting draw. So do we just Wasteland them? I don't think I want to. I think I'd rather Vigor. And then if they counter it, I can just Wasteland them. What is this, Ancestral? Yes. They have force backup? <laughs> okay. It's really hard to have force backup for a blue spell on that deck. Island? Okay, all right. So I'd love to draw not that. <laughs> Definitely not that. I think this like land is important to us advancing the game. That's why I kept it. I got to consider now if I want to hit this ancient tomb or not. I don't I think the answer is no. Well, I guess I can technically ponder uh, yeah, pondering is probably better than uroing here. I think I have to hit this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is... What, what am I going to do? I'm going to draw Vigor. 
But am I going to put Wasteland underneath? I'm going to Wasteland them, draw Vigor. I think I'm just going to put Shaman underneath. This guy, maybe that's greedy. I don't know if that's greedy or not. I think I want a wasteland here, so. Saga. I think I want to hit this. Okay, they have four cards still in hand. And we have a Wasteland underneath our Deathrite Shaman. If they don't have a thing to hit, we can play a Mist Hollow if we want. I kind of took the most conservative possible lines in this game. Fuck. Okay. They just have a Might Stone. The Hit Workshop is insane. It's so good here. I think they have a Might Stone. What is this? It's a Metamorph? Oh, it's a Dismember. Oh, for oof. Yeah. All right. Well, we're wasting. <laughs> okay. They have two cards now. There's really not that many lands in this deck. It's kind of unfortunate that they've just had so many lands. I mean, they did resolve an Ancestral, so. We are going to need some help off the top of our deck. I agree. Okay. Okay, we're uh, pretty close here. One Hydroid Crasis for the fam. I think I only have one left in my deck. No, I have two. I guess we actually need to hit a land first. So we have a lot of needs, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. Uh, Oko. Oko looks really good on this board. I can just turn off this Grim Monolith right away. Yeah, that's going to be so good for us. They could have PO'd in response. That would have been pretty strong. Land's a decent draw for us. Moxon's a pretty decent draw for us. No, nah, no, nah, it's like impossible to kill Oko. Still gonna just make a food with Oko though. If they want to trade Monolith for for I mean they won't. I, that, that's not a trade I'm not gonna make. But Oko, yeah, this is like the reason Oko is really broken is because <laughs> turning one thing into an elk doesn't kill the Oko. If they dismember my Myth Hollow Griffin, Mist Hollow Griffin, I do need to make sure I eat it with Food Chain, so I can't be f 6 here. But next turn, this thing goes, uh, put my Oko to 1, but then this is a dismember, it looks like. Alright, so I'm going to exile my Mist Hollow Griffin in response so that I can play it next turn if I hit mana. Then Oko goes to 1, but then we stand up our food token.
think we're actually looking pretty reasonable now. They ran out of mana. They don't have any Moxin. Land is decent. Another Oko. All right, so I didn't hit on mana. I can, of course, like, turn my Mox into an Elk and then, like, make mana turn my Mox into an Elk and then sack it to play the Mitz Tall Griffin if I need to. Um, don't think I want to do that particularly, but it's definitely something I can do. So my Oko is stabilized. I have another Oko. I'd love to, I mean, if they want to play another Mox or something, then I'd love to turn off this thing. All right, this is a only a block. I could even, you know, take two turns, turn an elk, an elf into an elf, an elk into a food, a food into an elk, <laughs> food. All right, now I can replay my my missed hollow griffin. My opponent does have six cards in hand. Um, if they, like, hit Workshop, things could get dicey. They did hit Ancient Tomb. That's definitely a start. Let's see what they do with their three mana. They're at 11 life, so they are getting threatened here. I can actually do nine damage next turn with Stand Up Food, play Oko, Stand Up El uh, Emerald. Uh, if this is, like, Metamorph on Mist Hollow Griffin, which it looks like it will be... They're going to have to just chump with this Mist Hollow Griffin. I guess they can kill their own, my Mist Hollow Griffin, which is unfortunate. I don't really want to leave. I guess I can just turn the Griffin. No, it will still be an artifact, right? Will it still be an artifact when I turn it into an elk? Oh, we hit Demonic Tutor. Uh, so in that case, stand up, put them to one, and then go for... I don't have Walking Ballista in my deck. Uh, I guess I go for a Kerasis. I guess we should just Demonic first and see what happens. Or what if we just hit Time Walk? Is that just... That should just be fine, right? That will save us time here. I guess we could get Uro. That's probably not good. Let's just get Time Walk and, and see if we resolve Time Walk. I don't think there's any reason to go crazy. Okay. So in that case, we just have Lethal. And we didn't have to go super crazy over it. Oh, we don't have lethal, do we? No, we do. They go to four, and then I stand up. Oh, yeah, okay. We're fine. Wow, that game... Those matches were really close. Okay. Uh, hell yeah. That's a W. All right. Round three. No bad bays across the table. We've got a nice one for sure. I like this hand. This hand obviously has some problems with um, Bizarre Baghdad, where we don't have a Wasteland in the hand, but we do have a Brainstorm to maybe get there. So, uh, And then in general, against the randomness, we have Mental Misstep Force. We're leading on Deathrite Shaman. Obviously, this ooze is a little out of place, but it is what it is. <laughs> what if we just go like black? Oh, of course it's Bizarre Baghdad. Of course. Well, this isn't the worst hand. I'm going to fetch my basic forest so I don't get wastelanded. And forest is what we want to eat with, so. All right, well, let's see what the damage is. Opponent is playing Cradle Vine, Hex Drinker, Hogak, Gaia's Cradle, Bizarre Deck. Hmm. I really don't want to force this, especially after... Well, fetching forest does have its downsides here. 
where it's harder for me to do a brainstorming. Hmm. I think I'd rather just let this resolve. Let's see what befalls us. Befells us? Be something's us? Something's going to happen to us. <laughs> We're going to see how bad it is. All right, they, sh they only got a cradle off that, so that's that's a good sign. That's a good sign. I don't know why they did it in their upkeep. They could have waited till after draw to have more information. No real reason to do it in their upkeep. They could do it on our turn to play around negation, but... I probably, if I was them, I would have done it on my end step to play around negation. There's basically no targets for negation in their deck, so just like letting an opponent have like a possibility of negating something uh, is kind of silly. Uh, opponent just F2'd. I mean, you should at least play the Cradle if you if you kept a hand that has nothing. Ruby, sure. If they play a root wall off this Ruby, I'm going to misstep it because this is going to let their Cradle make green mana. Strips, <laughs> come on! What is this nonsense? All right, fair enough. I don't know why I ever fetch a basic in my entire life, but this is what happens every time I do. The good news is I did draw a land. I don't think I'm going to... I think I'm going to play a second Death Rite Shaman over, like, uh, brainstorming or holding up an activation. I don't... I think it's very obvious they don't have a Bazaar of Baghdad um, in their opening hand, so I'm not really at risk of getting... Vengevind, so I think I'd rather get a second death right in play, especially with three uh, lands in the yard already. Obviously, they can top deck a bizarre, but all right. So we know that their hand has a guy's cradle and three other cards. They did draw a Yavamaya, so now they have green mana, but they don't have a play off of their green mana. Ballista. I guess we should just play a Ballista. Uh, I just ate my own forest like an idiot because it popped up. And this lets us beat a Hex Drinker. And then I guess there's no reason not to swing. Yep, we are playing a game of vintage. Definitely a game of vintage. Definitely not any other format. So they can play a cradle now, and it's going to be a forest. They don't really have any three drops to cast, but they are getting closer to like hard cast Vengevine. Or they're just not going to play their cradle. Why don't they want to play their cradle? I don't really understand. Yeah, sure. Maybe they didn't understand. They didn't realize the forest part of it. Jet's not terrible. Jet's certainly not terrible. Yeah. Maybe. I can't really block this root walla. Uh, and I'm not willing to pump my ballista here. I want to brainstorm, but I don't want to brainstorm lock myself. Uh, and also, it's my blue card for force. So, like, if they were to play a death right, would I force it? I mean, there's no death rights in the main of this deck, right? I don't think I'm supposed to press the issue over this root walla. What is this? 
<laughs> sure. Absolutely. I might do it this turn so that they don't... Oh, I guess they have the forest, so they can actually play the, the Vengevine no matter what, so... Wasteland. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to Wasteland their crate. Ooh. I might Wasteland their Yavamaya and then pump my Ballista and shoot the Rootwalla. Yeah. I gotta get this to stop popping out. I can't, please stop. <laughs> I can't. I can't handle. All right. So this is pump my ballista. Attack for two. And then shoot this root walla. And then they have no green mana again. What a great game of cube we're playing. Or maybe modern. <laughs> Certainly not vintage. Die. Die, little lizard. It's true. That's fair. Imagine if I rip a mox off the top and play an uh, uh, an Ave here. Ave? Is it Ave? Ave? Yeah, I don't think I wanted to hold waste. I really like the idea of taking them off of green mana. Okay, well, there's the green mana. <laughs> I think taking them off of green mana looks like a really... Uh... <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I'm going to cast the Brainstorm, too, while we're at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, can I just get rid of Force of Will? We just get rid of Force Will at this point in the game. We have, like, pretty solid follow-up. Can we play Uro and this? How much do we need? Eight total mana. So if I play an Uro... Oh, wait, we can, can we? We, we make a mana, make a mana, make a mana. Uh, play Uro. Gets this... Is it tapped? It's not tapped, right? We can just draw land, play land play lotus right i did i put it back in the right order i think i did i really think i did i sure hope i did if not we're gonna be in trouble a little bit but Come on, come on, come on, come on. Show me the show me the good order. Yes. Oh my god. We have stormed off here. We have absolutely stormed off. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the natural storm <laughs> this just <laughs> oh my lord
Oh, that's a, just a beautiful thing that just happened. <laughs> I am so happy with that play. You have no idea. <laughs> Oh my lord. Look how big they are. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> oh, she. Okay, so we're going to bring in uh Tabernacle and Needle and Endurance. Uh, and then we can consider Vigor, and we can consider Subtlety. I don't think I'm going to play either of those, though. We'll have to see. Um, I'm, like, kind of interested in just not playing Force of Will. And then playing, uh, well, Missed Up might be worth it just for Hex Drinker. Maybe the answer is we don't need four Force of Wills for Hollow One. Two Force of Will probably gets the job done. Force of Vigor, I should say. Kind of like the Walking Blist, <laughs> which is something. Um, maybe this is just like, we could just trim this Brainstorm, actually. Everything else looks pretty good in the matchup. I'm like a little sus on a brainstorm in our deck. We just don't have very many fetches. Um, I don't know if that's a weird thing to say, but. All right, let's try this. This is an interesting adaptation. Uh... <laughs> Woo, this hand slaps. <laughs> yes. This hand slaps. I have coverage for a really broken turn one play. I have access to uh, a card that will beat a bazaar, and I have a f ancestral. This hand slaps. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Two Venge Vines are in exile. They kept Vigors in, they kept seven card hand. Okay. You got a once upon a time. Besage you, okay. They just play Besage you? They just play Root Walla? Alright. I mean, in this case, we're just going to play a Catacomb Lotus, right? Just in case we want to besiege you. I don't know. Maybe we should even play Lotus. My opponent's hands have been very interesting seven card keeps. I don't know what would possess you to keep the seven card right here. I mean, maybe there's some cards in the hand that, like, maybe they had, like, triple hollow one and they were trying to hit Bizarre off of Once Upon a Time or something, but... I don't know. Very odd hands, to be honest. I decided not to misstep this uh, Root Walla because I think I'd rather hold them step for a Hex Shrinker. Our deck might have a trouble with a Hex Shrinker. Um, and I wasn't super worried about getting them up to two mana off a of Cradle. Yeah, like this looks like a pretty prime misstep target. Obviously, if they have a second one, it's a little awkward. I definitely took out all of my stuff. Um, can't fetch a blue source without getting wrecked by Wasteland. So, no worries there. Oh, I mean, how are they ever beating this? I kind of like... Um... I kind of even like Tabernacle make them pay for this Root Walla. They attack in and we Endurance and they die. 
I don't really think this tabernacle is getting much better. Like maybe it's better to just play Oko. Oko might just be the 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 answer, but this is gone. I don't need this. I mean, I think they're gonna pay. They don't really want to lose their cradle mana. Yeah, I mean, my opponent's deck is a bizarre deck specifically designed to not be, like, automatically lose to Tabernacle. Like, that's the whole point of Cradle Vine. The whole point of Cradle Vine is to not be weak to Tabernacle, so, you know, it makes sense. They also just, like, didn't have a broken start, right? Alright, sorry, friend. Run as you may, Modern Horizons still comes and gets you. And not weak to Leyline. Those are both true statements, yeah. So we're going to basically kill their creature, turn off their cradle, and they're in a bad spot. And we don't really care too much about having to pay for our 3-4 that kind of outsizes their whole deck. Though, we don't think we need to draw that many lands. So it does give them back their mana off of Beseju. So they do have a mana this turn, but they didn't have another land drop. At any point in time, they could draw Bazaar and things could get kind of bad for us. Um, worth noting that. <laughs> sure. Next turn, we have another Endurance or an Oko. I think I have to hold this Beseju for a Bazaar, right? I don't think Besejuing a Cradle is really... Oh, now I don't even have to fetch. It's kind of nice. They're going to Besejue my Bazaar? Absolutely. Oh my... Wait, I... I can tap my... Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, why the hell not? Absolutely. Besage you all the way, baby. And I'll go get another land off of this. <laughs> And I don't even have to pay anything. I can play an Oko. Oh my lord, it's all it's all downhill for them. I did draw an additional land here. Crazy. I guess this is what happens when you don't fetch for lands. Oh, boy. This was a weird game of magic, I have to admit. What order do I need to do things in to make an elk token that doesn't have a tabernacle on it? I have to play the tabernacle first and then make the elk token? I agree. I think opponent's hand was a fairly loose keep. Looks like a Vengevine's coming, though. So, we don't lose our Oko. Oh, it's a hard cast hollow one. I love it. We're going to murder it.
<laughs> we're gonna we're gonna besage you this. I wonder if they brought a forest in. Deck might not have one. Oh, they did have one. Nice. <laughs> That was a hell of a match. We drew so many lands. Oh, I love it. All right. 3-0 so far. What do we got in store? Well, this hand has zero of the manas. After having all the manas, now we have none of the manas. We'll have to do better than that. Is this better than that? Uh... We're on the draw with a probe. So, yes. I guess. I don't know, man. I might get rid of this Oko instead in case we drop food chain. Maybe that's silly. Yeah, I'm not sure what what deck we're beating with this hand. Hmm. Tropical Island certainly helps our cause. No shuffle. All right. Show me your secrets. Second missed hollow griffin was not ideal. They have a wasteland. God. Uh. Mm, mm. I think I'm gonna ponder. If they want to wasteland me. That I mean, they'll still have enough mana. I guess it doesn't matter. Force. Do we want force plus one land? Is that good enough? I guess it is. Crisis for one doesn't draw us any cards, though. We really needed a like Deathrite Shaman land land. I think I'm going to put this... Fuck. I don't know. If this Kresis was any card other than <laughs> Hydroid Kresis, I think I would be interested in keeping this. Ah. Uh... There's so many ways it can go wrong. I don't know. This if I if I cast this for three, it does nothing, right? Gain half of X and draw half of X rounded down each time. Yeah. What a magic card. All right, I'm gonna shuffle. No! Bad! Very bad! <laughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. God, imagine my opponent just freaking running sixes me. Oh, these cards are so much worse! We're so dead. <laughs> We've drawn all the bad cards in our deck. Like there's, there's like seven or so bad cards in our deck. We've drawn most of them. Yeah, and they drew preordain. This is no. Come on, man.
All right, we need to draw Death Rite Shaman this turn, and they need to not have for uh, not force it. Sure. Okay. I mean, it's good. What do they do with the Ponder? Uh, they preordained. They top bottomed. Uh, we're so dead to this Oko. Like just oh, so dead to this Oko. They drew Sapphire. <laughs> God, we're so dead. Oh, they went Narset. I mean, we are, we're also dead to that, I guess. All right, I still think Death Ray Shaman's our best draw. I would, I would say Food Chain's a good draw, but unfortunately, it's just gonna get forced. Maybe we should have kept forced land. I don't, I don't know if that was that much better though, because of the crisis. I don't know. We're just super dead. I almost don't even want to show them these cards, you know. Though they do have Ren and Six. Oh no. Oh no. Is it just Rug? Uh oh. The problem now is uh, we can never play a food chain and resolve a four drop because we're just going to get Wasteland locked out of this game. Unless we draw a Death Ray Shaman, but now they're definitely going to force our Death Ray Shaman. I have no idea what combination of cards will get us out of this game. I mean, should we show that? Is it even worth showing? Right? We They know they have force. They force this food chain and then they wasteland me twice. Yeah, I'm just going to concede. That went really badly. Uh, our hand was just super mediocre. Uh, I guess this is a subtlety gaming matchup of a vigor. It's kind of nice. I don't really think this is a walking ballistic game matchup. I'd rather have flash endurances. I mean, it definitely got better. This Besaju looks kind of garbo. I don't know if you're allowed to take out this Besaju, but I'm going to. Okay, we're gonna run like this. A little more lean. Look at that wave. Look how subtle it is. Imagine we have a Mist Hollow Griffin in play that we cast for four mana, and then boom, all of a sudden, food chain my Mist Hollow Griffin casts subtlety. God. The value. Think of the value. Uh, yeah. That was rough. That was a sad time. Can't say I was happy about that game of Magic the Gathering. Uh, this hand looks bad too. Can we stop drawing Mist Hollow Griffins and Hydroid Crisis? <laughs> Please? I'm a Deathrite Shaman deck. Thank you. Just give me a Deathrite Shaman. Well, I might... I might I'm gonna bottom a land instead of a Mist Hollow Griffin. Just, you know. That was a nice turn one Death Ray Shaman. Untap. Brainstorms available. They have Mental Mist up. Good lord. All right, it wasn't meant to be. Rug gaming too powerful, apparently. Rug gaming. Anyone down to cast a Mist Hollow Griffin? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm actually not down for that. <laughs> it looks real bad.
It's a monkey. No. Do they have a young a young oh no. Okay. A young shaman? Your boy young shaman? I don't even want to brainstorm. We're gonna get wastelanded again. What do they have? Like collector roofs and tarmogoyfs? Is this like a Javier Dominguez style? That's a, that's something worth doing. I'm going to brainstorm. Interesting. I mean, they can have pyro, right? So I have to stand up my jet if I do this. I guess I don't have to do anything, really. I could just waste. And then next turn, I don't have to use the Lotus. All right, well, I'm just going to get forced, though. Oh, my God, they're F6. We're going in. How many more times can I get wastelanded? If I had put this mock shot in play before, I could attack with it. I don't think I'm going to do that anyways. If they have pyro, they have pyro, I think. I'm pretty sure I need this jet to like play Uros and stuff. Time walk. Mox time walk. Blue land here is not ideal. They have five cards in hand, and we have one. Oh, it's Dak Faden. Steel Jet. Sure. Okay. Three mana, steal my jet. I guess that's better than getting Pyro Blasted. This game went so badly. Th this game was entirely predicated on the fact that my opponent had mental misstep and I did not have mental misstep. Right? Like, this entire game is 100% they had mental misstep and we lost the game. That's just the whole game. No, nah, the the game like the cruise is it's just the misstep. The the turn one mental misstep win game. Yeah, fair. <sighs> it's so bad for me. Uh I 
I really absolutely hate blue fair mirrors in vintage. I really think they are like typically when you play a, a you know a, a fair you know somewhat controlling matchup uh, in other formats like a mirror a control mirror. It's usually very skill testing in my mind. I don't find vintage ones to be skill testing at all. It, it it typically feels like who drew their restricted cards. Obviously, our deck is even worse because we have a bunch of like really bad magic cards in our deck. So it's like, and they have a bunch of preordains instead. So it's like impossible to win. It's just no shot. Like, I think this game was probably our fav in our favor if we just had Deathrite Shaman in play. Oh, they are also a Deathrite Shaman deck. They just cast it off of my jet. Hella dope. That's an interesting attack. Can't say I recommend that attack at all. Nothing matters, though. All right. It is what it is. They had the better deck for the matchup, for sure. We, it was going to be a hard time with our... Without having, like, ancestral missed up hands of our own, I just don't think we can compete with that kind of deck. All right, here we are. Fifth round. We got a rally. And see what we can do with our fast bond. Not fast bond. We're a food chain deck. This deck is uh this hand is uh one green source away from being a nice one. Unfortunately, I think this is just not well. Man. Uh mm. I don't know. This is like pretty close. We have force pitching mist hollow griffin. We have mental mist up. We have a bunch of fast mana. We're just like land drop, land drop away from being. In, I mean, we're not really in a good spot if we have land drop, land drop, right? I, I'm just, I was just find a death right shaman hand. Thank you. Just need a little death right shaman hand in our lives. Classic bug. We have three mocks in our deck. We have two of them in both of our opening hands. <laughs> our deck is really bad. I, I have to admit, I think our deck is just quite atrocious. <laughs> it just, it's just, it's getting by on the power of force, ancestral, wasteland, death for a shaman, which is a thing you can do. It's not really about over-specialized metagames. <laughs> Our opponent is on Golo Shops. They have let us know because they know that we are on Fast Bond combo. <laughs> or, I keep saying Fast Bond because freaking Spice Lord in chat is playing Fast Bond. Food Chain. It's, you know, it's pretty similar, right? I think what I'm looking at here against prison shops is a uh, death right jet emerald pass maybe end step blue source pre like low value brainstorm just to utilize our mana efe efficiently and then play hydroid crisis for two hopefully food bond names bond food bond opponent is on the mold of five. <laughs> I love food. Food and I, great friends. All right. Uh, I think I, li I like the play I have decided to do. I don't know if it's... I mean, it's not a great play. It's not a high-value play, but it's the play we're making. Don't really want to expose myself to a Wasteland on turn one. I think that would put us a little too far behind. Island? You just said you were on Golo Shops. And you're on Island? Are you casting Ancestral too? What's happening here? 
the worst brainstorm of all time. All right, well, show me what you're working with. They're on Golo shops. They didn't want to lead. Uh, I guess it's pretty bad to lead Ancient Tomb Sphere resistance against Death Ray Shaman. That does make sense to me. The question now is I think I play a 2 2 Kuresis and a Death Ray Shaman. I could play a 3 3. It doesn't really do very much. Oh, yeah, I need blue. Yeah. Maybe I don't play Death Ray Shaman. Well, now I think I'm not going to play Death Ray Shaman. <laughs> My opponent's laughing at me in chat. My opponent just gave me a Lamo and a lull after I cast Hydroid Creasis. Well, come on, man. Don't hurt a guy like that. <laughs> oh man. They don't, they don't tell them they can laugh. Uh so there's no reason for us to force now. Uh we're gonna wait until they're upkeep. In case we draw a different green card we wanna hit. Alright, so we wasteland this ancient tomb. We get the Ancient Tomb. I guess we don't even have to. And play a Mist Hollow Griffin. Are they going to laugh at that one too? I actually don't even think I need to Vigor anymore. I'm not going to. I guess if they draw a Workshop and play Golos, I'll be pretty sad. All right, I think I'm just going to hit these two. <laughs> Ooh, your daddy. Bam. <laughs> what a game of magic that we just played. <laughs> Hydroid Crisis, Vintage Stable. Uh, Alright, so my opponent is on Prison Shops. I'm going to bring in Vigor. Uh, uh, why not wait and hardcast what? Oh, the Vigor? I don't know, I just wanted to do it. Because I had the, the, the clock there. Maybe I could have attacked and I had the same clock. Uh, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I don't think you typically want Collector Roof in this matchup. I don't think I really want Walking Ballista either. I'm just going to bring in the Vigors, and that's good enough for me. Maybe I take out Probe, and we play like another Endurance. I don't like that. Yeah, this looks fine. They laughed, and then they died by my flying jellyfish hydra. So, who's the wheel wheel? Who's the wheel winner now? They laughed, and then I showed them my jellyfish. Uh, all right, I'm gonna mulligan this hand. This hand's fine. I think I keep only one of. Maybe I can just get rid of this Endurance. It's probably the best play. Okay, Workshop. Sphere. All right, fair. All right, and that's a much better start. Being on the play makes all the difference, huh? Force of Vigor? Now their Shaman is not ideal. Uh, I mean, anything is better than Standstill. So I would say this deck is better than Standstill. Oh my god, double Workshop. We're dead. We're super dead. We're a 100% Odetto. 
It's a four mana two two though. Oh. They have a follow up sphere. No follow up sphere. Okay. Uh, interesting. Okay. I think we just gotta play this and this and this and this has got to be a basic. If we get ghost quarter, I'll be really upset. So unfortunately, the sphere stops my food chain combo, which I didn't really factor into my assessment of what we were doing here. Uh, this is going to be a strip mine, isn't it? No, it's going to be a saga. Okay. I mean, this is a 5-5, five five, so already things are pretty bad. So I kind of have to draw a vigor or we don't really progress. Oh, fuck off. All right, don't get basic forest. Got it. Noted. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's try again. Being on the draw sucks. <laughs> Highly don't recommend it. Death Rate Shaman on the play, super good. What do you got for me, deck? Yeah, that is a bad cube draft if I've ever seen one. Let's try this again. <sighs> is this a keep? My deck is three and one, Soul Surge. Calm down. Oh, God. This deck is so bad. You're keeping this? Are you keeping both fetch lands and four and four vigors? <laughs> oh my god all right i'm down you've sold me how good is force of vigor we're here to find out together <laughs> yeah is it <laughs> it's not exactly what i was looking for i was looking for turn one death right shaman good god my opponent please mercy Maybe I don't have to do this. Maybe I shouldn't have done this and just gone for the two mana sphere. I don't know. You, I don't even think hitting their mana sources is good enough. They have a workshop in play. Maybe it's fine. What are they going to do? Kill me. Second workshop, die. I'd love a wasteland though. What am I going to do? Look at that. Easy. Uh... You can't keep Wasteland there. It's just not feasible. Until I hit Ghost Quarter. Oh my lord. What is happening? So e even if I destroy their stupid Crucible, I'm still going to get Wastelanded here and not be able to play my Deathrite Shaman. But I have to. Have to draw land. I wish I had never killed their mana. That was just such a bad play. I don't know why I thought that was an okay play. Killing their mana was just not 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 remotely reasonable play to make. 
Hit the lamb drop. Still alive. Got a dodge a Golos. Kind of got a dodge a Saga too. What do we hit? Hit Golos. Has to be Golos, right? And I can't force it. So this is gonna be Saga, I assume. And Wasteland? Bruh. I have to hit Wasteland or I lose the game on the spot. It's just lost. Man, we lose to prison shops? It's embarrassing. This game was lost when I hit their Mana Crypt instead of their Sphere Resistance, though. It was kind of just a bad play on my end. <laughs> Alright, opponent. I see you. It's a hell of, hell of a series of draws, though. I must admit. I just can't beat these Saga tokens, though. It was not great. It was admittedly better than Bug, but most things are better than Bug. I think Aggro Shops is super well positioned right now. It beats up on all of the best decks in the format. I think... Uh... I just think that getting, you know, playing like a Fleet Wheel Cruiser aggro shops deck is super strong right now. All right, you know what? I, I don't think I can complain about this deck going 3-2. It is definitely just bug with some extra bad cards in it. Uh, we did get to do all of the things I wanted to do in the stream, so I can't be unhappy, right? We did uh, a normal, you know, Crisis for 40, we did a, a, a non-infinite storm uh, ooze for like five. So we did really all of the cool things uh, that we could choose to do. So I, I, I'm pretty happy. Um, this deck is bad. I don't recommend playing this deck. It is not something you should try at home. <laughs> but it, uh, I have got to cast my first uh, progenitor ooze, and I am definitely a fan of that one. I don't know how most decks make triple green mana, but uh, triple green mana is a thing. <laughs> uh, we started 3-0, and I was super happy, but uh, then we ran into decks that played magic cards, and <laughs> that was all over from there. Thank you for watching this content. New vintage videos on this YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I will see you then.